Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. This is Pastor Tim Odin. Uh, we've been friends for 20 years? Yeah. 20 years. We've been great friends. I know we both look 20, but uh, yeah, it's been 20 years. And... Uh, <laughs> And let me tell you something, we, we, have, we have a great history together. Uh, we, we have uh, done ministry together um, in, in, gosh, probably 14 of those 20 years. Mm -hmm. We did ministry together. We've ministered together many times. And uh, tonight I just, I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I don't know what God's going to do, but I'm just going to go with the flow of the Holy Spirit tonight. And aren't you glad you came to church tonight? Yeah. I just feel just so just like, even I feel just like so, ah. Which is great because I want to talk to you about something. The Spirit of God already started moving with our worship team, and we right. didn't even plan this, and we were talking about this. I mean, just with the words, I want more and more of you. And let me tell you something. Jesus in the Scripture, if you read the book of John, he, 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 he makes this amazing prayer. And mind you, this is your Savior, my Savior, Jesus. And he prays to God the Father, and he says, Father... I pray that they would know you the way you and I know each other. Mm -hmm. How, is that a deep prayer or what? Like Jesus' greatest desire was that we would have a relationship like he had with his father. Like that was his prayer. God, I pray, Father, I pray that they would want to know you the way we know each other, that they would want to know you. That, and what's, what was the song tonight? That's, that, that's actually my message tonight, mm. is that we would want to know the Father the way they had a relationship. And so many times, I think there's a disconnect um, because we, and then the word famil familiar came out, you know, as, as they were singing prophetically. And isn't that so true? When you become familiar with someone, or something, you almost lose the sense of newness or you kind of lose the sense of respect or you have the temptation of not, not cherishing that person because oh, I already know you. And so God's saying, I, I, want, I want us to begin to understand the gift that's been given to us. And, and you know what that greatest gift was? God from the very beginning he wants to reveal his thoughts to us about us. God wants to reveal, God wants you to know this is how much I love you. I mean, put it this way. God wanted this so bad that he wanted to do it in three days. Death, burial, resurrection. He wanted to show you, he wanted to reveal how much he loved us in three days. God is awesome, huh? That means that you can probably forgive someone in three days and love them all over again, right? Right? Because there's the death. <laughs> you, they, they killed me. Then you're buried, but then you're resurrected. Okay, I love you. Yay, right? And so this was God the Father, man. He wanted to reveal. But check this out. Not only does God want to reveal his thoughts about us or concerning us, but God wants to reveal his thoughts in you for someone else. He wants that. God started this whole movement of the igniting of the Holy Spirit by love. For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave, right? We know that one, right? But, but, but just stay with me, okay? Let's not be so, so uh, familiar with that verse. Familiar, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. We don't know even. Okay, but what does that really say? That says that God is a gift giver. He's about giving life for God's soul. But it started with what? Love. Stay with me. It started with love. For God so loved. God said, because I love you. See, we all have different love languages. Did you all know that? What are some of the love languages? Do you know some of them? Um, giving, touch. Uh, Affirmation. Yeah. You know what mine is? I'm a gift giver. I love, that's how I, that's how I tell people I love you. I buy you things. 
That's my language. Anybody like anybody have that language? Like for other people, it's like, no, just tell me, give me your words, and I just feel better. For me, it's like I don't care about your words. Just give, buy me a gift. <laughs> you want to apologize? Buy me a gift, and I'll be like, all right, cool, man. No, that's just me. That's my language. It's just, but that's God's language. God's language was, I love you, and let me show you. Boom! Here's my son, and his son gets ripped up. I mean, think about it. Think about it. If there's going to be an ignite, an ignition, an activation of the Holy Spirit in us, who's already in you. Listen, if you're a born-again believer, the Holy Spirit is already in you. The problem is, is that he's dormant in us. What do I mean? Well, check this out. I don't know about you, but Anusha, let's just say um, it was your birthday. And we all know it's Anusha's birthday. And actually... Excuse me, my birthday's coming up. <laughs> October 20. And let's say you were all buying me a gift. No, but, <laughs> but check this out. But, check, but wouldn't it be funny if I went to the mall, knowing that it was Anusha's birthday, and I went there, I'm like, mm, and then I found something that was just so cool because I thought it was cool, and then I bring it home. And I wrap it up, and I find the coolest box, the coolest bow, the coolest wrapper, and I just wrap that bit, and I'm all excited. But it was never meant for her. It was meant for me. The Bible says it's better to give than to receive, right? Listen, when, when I go out of my way to buy someone a gift, that's because I have such a value for them. That I'm willing to spend the time to go to the mall, find the perfect gift, go get it wrapped, put the right bow on it, right? Because once I come, I come and I bring a gift. How do you think Anusha's going to feel? Man, she's going to be, and you know what? how I feel? I feel super excited because I can't wait, like, open it, open it, come on. And have you ever been the person that starts ripping it up for them and with them? <laughs> right? And so, please listen, that's how God feels about you. He wants, this is how Jesus felt about you. He said, when Jesus was, was about to ascend back to the Father, he says, hey, listen, I love you so much. I don't leave you an orphan. I leave you a gift, a helper. And his name is the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit, he comes in and he says, hey, I don't leave you empty inside. I leave you nine gifts. Everybody say gift. Gift. You have to understand that, that God wants us to not only receive gifts from him, but God wants us to give gifts to others by the Holy Spirit. He wants us. He wants us to be activated. He wants us to be ignited. Today, tonight, when you came here tonight, did you receive encouragement? Did you receive refreshment? That's the God we serve. He's just so giving, man. He just always gives you peace. Did anybody walk in heavy tonight just kind of like, ah, oh, how many feel better now? Man, God is just so good. Now, what if, what if, what if we, the church, started doing church with people, not that they have to have a service like ours, but the gift that's in you of valuing others would change their life. Because God wants to reveal his voice to others. Are, are you with me? You can jump in any time, Pastor Tim, at all. But I'm just going to keep going here. You just tell me, all right? Just stay with me. Because we're going to flow. We're going to flow. Did you have something to say right now? No. Okay. I, I, I'm waiting to be enlightened. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> God's wisdom. Because I'm, I'm My yielded. love language is humility. What's that? <laughs> good, good, okay. <laughs> let, 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 let me show you something. I, I want to show you this because I want to see the church. I want to see you guys. This is why we created Ignite. I want us. I want us to really, to really desire. Like if we want, I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. What you're really saying is, if you really want more of Him, that means then God wants more of you too. It's not just a one-way street. And so God is gonna. You're gonna get more of God and some. But God wants also more of you. And more of you means that he needs you. That we can't just be dormant and familiar with, I go to church, I read my Bible, 
I pray and I fellowship. There is a dying world who needs the Father's love revealed to them. Look, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 and 3, and I'm sure Pastor Tim's going to jump on this one. This is one of his favorite verses. Look, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I've become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift, everybody say gift. Come on, and though I have the gift, though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and I have all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. God, God wants us to love the fact he loves people that need his voice revealed to them. God wants you to reveal the Father's voice. God needs you to reveal the Father's voice. But I'm not like that, Pastor. That's not me. You're the pastor. You're, you're the one that does that. Pastor, we come to hear you. Great. You come to hear me. I come, I come here to equip you so that you can go and speak and share. And we'll talk about that right now. But God wants you to reveal the thoughts of the Father to others. Let, let me give you another. Did you want to jump in yet? I'm going to keep going. Invite me in. If you okay, you're ready. Go ahead. Go, ahead. Okay. go, go right there. Because I know this is a big one. That yeah. we, we, we know that, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Many, how many here, uh, you really desire to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit? How many really desire that? Okay. How many just don't desire it? No, don't lift your hand. <laughs> you should desire it. Everyone should think about it. If not, then you become familiar with Christianity. Christianity is more than just being a church attender. It's so much more. Listen, Jesus didn't die for just us to come into a building and to sing songs and to shout praises while the people that you and I know are going to hell. He didn't, Jesus died for people because he loves them. But notice that it is much more difficult to reach people with just words of like, well, you know what? God wants to save your soul. I don't care. But when you come with a spirit and a gift from God that reveals something about them that only God can give you, oh, man, that changes the whole game. All of a sudden, you're like, how did you know? How did you know that? Let, let me let me let me do this. Are, are you ready? Anytime. Okay. <laughs> go. Let loose, because I got something to go. Go ahead. Go. Let loose. Um, I think one thing to underscore, which is very important when it comes to our relationship with God and the love of God, is that everything that God has done in creating the universe was that He wanted to do something, create something that He never had. Yeah. Everything up until the time of creating the earth and Adam and Eve, all of the beings that surrounded him were created and programmed essentially to love him. As far as I know, angels had the capacity to disconnect from God, but they didn't have the permission. And so when, when Satan exalted, said, I'll exalt myself above the throne of God, that was illegal, got him cast out of the earth. But God wanted a creation that would choose to love him between options. Yeah. So he created us with free will, and then he gives options, worldliness, fleshliness, the things that our flesh desires, and tells us there's a better way, and it's loving me. And he's inviting us to love him, but he won't violate our will because he doesn't want another being program to love him he wants us to choose him that's right right so what does he do he courts us he woos us right he puts people in our life to tell them about the goodness of god and the love of god and we're like you know i don't know and we're really <laughs> he really does and he'll drop bombs on you to show you how much he loves you because you're created for relationship the relationship must have the dimension of free will 
or you're just another robot saying, I love you, God, yeah. right? Yeah. So everything that he's done in creating the entire universe and putting us on a planet and walking us through the option to choose or reject him is part of his plan. And that necessarily implies there's some things that are contrary to his nature that we're attracted to. Yeah, right. very, very good. And so our, our greatest desire, honestly, should be that the interruption of this world is always going to be there. And you just have to accept the fact that the temptations of this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life will always be there. But I have the wonderful gift of choice to begin to choose, to want to know God just a little bit more. As, as I read this verse in 1 Corinthians 2.16, I was blown away when I read this verse. I just thought, you know what, I've read this verse a bazillion times, but there was something different about this verse because when you operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you are really sharing the, the mind of God and the, love for that, the, and the love of God for that person. Look, look at this. In 1 Corinthians 2.16, it says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? So check this out. But we have the mind of what? That means that we have the same processor of Jesus in our lives. Think about it. Jesus prayed, Father, man, I'm praying for them that they would know you the way we know each other. And who has the mind of Christ that he or she may be instructed? We do. We have the mind of Christ on the inside of us. I'm trying to take us somewhere here because I, I want you to understand that, that, that God is just waiting for us to go out. When you go out and you begin to, to share not only the love of God or you reveal the thoughts of God or you reveal the, the plan of God, the purpose of God for someone's life, there's something special that happens with that person. There's a, there's a, connect, there, there's a divine connection because you have divine intelligence. Do you understand? So think about it. People in the FBI, CIA, they have... They have inside intelligence about things that none of us know about right now that's happening with North Korea and the United States. We're all just like North Korea and we're just like, you know, they know <laughs> they got some intelligence that we're not privy to. So check this out. So God loved you so much. Jesus loved you so much that he said, I'm going to give you my mind in order for me to instruct you in order for you to reveal to others. I'm bringing you divine intelligence. Divine. I have the mind of Christ, divine intelligence. Are you hearing me today? And we just, talk, we just, we just started talking about this in my office right now. And so the Spirit of God just knocked us off our feet and just giving us some awesome stuff here. But, but check this out. We also have to realize that with that divine intelligence comes responsibility. You know what that responsibility is? I'm going to throw Pastor Tim under the bus. What's that responsibility, Pastor Tim? <laughs> I'm happy you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I asked you. <laughs> well, I don't know if this is where you wanted to go, but this is what's coming up in my <laughs> Let's spirit. Let's do it. Um, when we made a decision to choose Jesus, when he courted us, he used people to tell us about the goodness of God. And we felt something in our spirit and we sensed the presence of God. And we said, all right, I choose the Lord. Okay. That began our journey of relationship yeah. with him. But that decision for relationship, we have to make every day. We're connected with God, right? but we can still live in the flesh as Christians. Right. So we have to make a choice every day for relationship. Yes. We have to value the relationship enough to cultivate it, right? So that means I have to pray, have to be in the word. I have to listen to God speak. Uh, I have to listen to other people who God is speaking through, right? And so uh, it's not enough just to make a decision for God. You gotta make that decision every day. And so, uh, but, if I, you know, I made a decision to marry my wife because I loved her, right? But now I have to make a decision every day to wake up and say, hey, good morning, babe, how you doing? And it connect, 
connect that relationship. What? You want me to do the dishes? Okay. Right. So you got to stay in good graces, right? <laughs> yeah. So we have to make a decision to cultivate that relationship because relationship is what we're created for. And we see it in the garden when Adam would meet God in the cool of the day to talk about his life every day. It wasn't about the assignment that Adam had. It was about that his assignment required the wisdom of God on a daily basis. And God was looking for a relationship there. Key word, the wisdom of God. Think, 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 think about this. How many were at the movies, the, 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 the series at the movies? Do you guys remember when I did the movie The Pursuit of Happiness? That's the problem with with most people is that we're pursuing happiness instead of pursuing the wisdom of God. Think about it. If we just start going in the complete pursuit of God, don't you think that God would give you wisdom that will trade in your happiness you're searching for for the joy of the Lord? See, because happiness is temporary, joy is eternal. And so so we need to begin to pursue. So think about it. When, when he used the example of, of our wives, we pursue our wives, right, for a purpose. Because it's wisdom. <laughs> and the Bible counsels us to do it. We pursue God because God wants to download wisdom for your life. God wants to reveal his thoughts about your business. Think about it. We, we, will, we, we in America, we pay millions and, 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 and thousands and hundreds of dollars to go. I go to conferences every year. That costs me money. Why? Because I'm in the pursuit of knowledge. Nothing wrong with that. But that should not trump my pursuit of God. Yeah. Because the ultimate wisdom of all men is God. So right now, maybe you need counsel in your marriage. You need wisdom in your business. You need wisdom for a decision. You need to pursue God. Pursue him and say, God, and, but that takes, but that takes, that takes, that takes you and I wanting, desiring, choosing. I really want God. And, and, and you know what? There's something beautiful about this. Let me read you this verse, and then Pastor Tim, jump back in there again, okay? Let's just keep doing this. Okay. Look at this. Uh, he, here's why we have to do this, because I'm telling you, there are people right now in your workplace. There are people right now that, that you're connected. You own a business, right? You always see customers. Well, guess what? When they walk into your shop, I believe that God wants to give you the divine intelligence to be able to, to have something that they have not seen and that they have not heard, but God has shown you. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm just praying that your store will be the store of weeping of joy. Because it will be a healing place for God. Here's what I mean. Look, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, 10. Look at this. 1 Corinthians, look. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the what? The what? Which God? Prepared. Okay. The things that God has what? Prepared. Has God prepared something for the people you work with? Well, some of us don't care. Like, yeah, sure, I don't care. <laughs> has God prepared something for you? Okay, so has God prepared something for the whole world? Yes. yes. So check this out. So then, nor, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Love, Love him. him. And everybody loves God. Not everybody serves God, but I say just about everybody loves God. You ask people right now, America claims to be Christian. Claims. But that's a whole other story. But, everybody say but. But God has revealed what? What has he revealed? He's revealed plans. But God has revealed them to who? Us. Through what? 
his Holy Spirit, right? For the Spirit searches what? All things. For what? Yes, the deep things of God. So think about it. God not only has the deep things that you need, but God has the deep things that others need through you. We got to start, we got to start being gift givers, guys. Because the Holy Spirit is not in you to be dormant and just kind of hang out with you and be like, hey, I'm in you. Isn't that nice? Hey, we're going to talk to that fella. Come on, man, I'm hungry. And you just like, God, God is, this is God. God, it is God's DNA to be generous. If you're a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God, you're a generous person. You're a giving person. You long to give something to people. You long to stop for people. You long to drop a little sum on them, a little, little. Man, wouldn't it? I think, I think it would be bomb.com if you did that. I think, listen, if you look at, if you look at TV shows, have you seen the TV shows where, where I like, I like real, anybody like real estate? There's this one real estate show that I like. I was tripping out how this, these people on this reality show, they bring in a, uh, a psychic, or what do you call those people? A, a medium, yeah, a medium. And he's a business medium. And tells them where to buy, what, where not to buy. What to, and I'm thinking, these people are dropping millions for this guy to come. I'm thinking, this dude is hearing from demons, and we got the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. We have the Spirit of God. But listen, but at least that guy, at least he desires to know the gift giver. He just doesn't know the name of that gift giver. His name is Jesus, right? But check this out. But God... God honors and respects his word so much that he wants to give it to us so that we can reveal it to others. I mean, I want to be able to reveal a secret to someone and be like, hey, guess what? Here's what God's saying to me. You should do this, and, and here's what I sense, and here's what he speaks. Wouldn't that be amazing? Wow. Put that verse back up. Let's leave that up there, please, because that should sink in a little bit right there. Pastor Tim. You know... That's the beauty of spontaneous. You just kind of like, Pastor Tim, I'm done. <laughs> Take it away. Okay. Let, let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about spontaneous. Yeah. He called me at 530 <laughs> to tell me I was going to be doing this. That's how okay. I roll. He I'm so, like, hey, Pastor Tim, we're going to do this so together. only love like. would get me up here on short notice. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I was giving you a gift. Amen. Look what it says. It says, the things which God prepared for those who love him which implies that God has something set aside for us if we love him. But doesn't that put a burden on you to try to dig deep and find some love for God so you can get your stuff, right? <laughs> but that's not the way it works. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. That's right. That's right. When God gives you a revelation of how much he loves you, you you'll be completely undone. You'll be smitten, you know. Quick story, very short. Please, when I please. first got saved, right, uh, I got saved. I, God pursued me, and I ran from him. I rejected him. He would send people from every corner of my life to minister Christ to me. He dropped a bomb on me, and I talked to you about it in the office, and I think I even shared it the first time I ministered here, that I was in a restaurant. Uh, I, w I was brokenhearted. I was studying, like, philosophy. I didn't have any answers to any of the big questions. A guy walks in the restaurant, sits down right next to me and says, Son, I'm the pastor from across the street. I was praying for my church. God sent me over here to tell you that what you're looking for, you're not going to find in that book. What you're looking for is God. And he got up and walked out. And so God came after me and revealed the, rea the reality. The bomb was not that God wasn't real. I guess I probably believed God was real, but that he knew my struggle in that moment. He knew me, and he created a divine appointment and gave me a word of knowledge about how he cared enough about me to send somebody to pull me into the kingdom. Yeah. And I still, didn't, I still wasn't ready to close the deal, but that haunted me. 
God's love will haunt you, that's right? right? That's right. That's until right. you love him back. That's right. And once you make that connection, then guess what? Things are prepared for you. That's right. That's so good. That's so good. Well, listen, we're done. And I know that we can keep going, but check this out. Uh, this coming Sunday at 5 o'clock, just so you know, I want our church to, to really begin to experience the prophetic. And so what I did and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing in people that have the office of prophet and uh, they're actually operating that full gift. We all have the gift of prophecy. Not everybody has the office of prophet. Like, for example, everyone here knows how to minister. Not everyone here has the office of pastor. Just because you can preach doesn't mean you're a pastor, right? And so everyone has a specific gift, whether you're in the fivefold ministry or whether you're in the marketplace ministry, which business owners, you're a minister, but in the business world, it's just knowing your, your position with God, right? Because what we all must be positioned, and you all need divine intelligence for the position that God has given you. And so this coming Sunday, uh, we're going to have some, uh, some special friends. Why don't we just show that quick video? Uh, for the announcement for uh, the promo video for this coming Sunday. Just take a look at this and then we're uh, going to close up the service. And the Lord said, have I not kept you and I'm keeping you? You see, I'm flooding you, I'm flowing this through you. Yes, a cleansing. Yes, a thing that you never thought could do. So this coming Sunday, and it's, 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 we gave it the name more because it's not an Ignite service. It's not a Sunday service. It's not a, a normal Wednesday, which now we do Wednesdays, hour, we call it hour 15 now an hour and 15 minute service except for Ignite. Ignite is a two hour service. Uh, but this Sunday at 5 p.m., um, we're going to have Keith and Mary Hudson who are just phenomenal prophetic people. And listen, they, they, they obviously, their, their daughter is Katy Perry, so obviously they have huge influence in the entertainment industry. Uh, but they're the most humble, most God-fearing people. Uh, we've met them probably two years ago. And we've, we've stayed in connection, relationship. They have been wanting to come to Elevate Church because they said to me, we have a word from heaven for Elevate. And, uh, and they said, we need to come and release this word. And so I said, okay. So we figured out the date. So this Sunday, uh, it's going to be a, a prophetic service. So uh, we're going to take what we learned tonight, but you're going to see it in action on Sunday. And, uh, and I'm already, I already, already told them that they have freedom and uh, to give prophetic words and, and just to call out people and and uh, we'll be ready as well to, uh, to move in that prophetic gift as well. And, uh, and just to see what God does in this church. And I really believe that you, this, is, this is something you don't want to miss. But I want to ignite you. I want to tell you that just being a title Christian is boring. You want some excitement? Man, go love some people hard by revealing false thoughts about them and you watch and see every time you share and you give a gift you're going to get the big surprise can you throw me that gift please just throw it thank you every time you give a gift i can't wait for the smile and especially when they open it oh my how about when you give your kids gifts right you're just like oh my god open it already right uh and why i just want to see the expression well that should be the same way when you are ministering to people there should be a hunger and a desire to see the expression of the love of the Father on their face because they're, they're unveiling and it's been, the, the thing that's been revealed is being unrevealed to them and then they're like, wow, I needed that from God. Amen. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.